In example 5, we look at our limited interest provisos. So again, guys, this is not necessarily the most important in exams. So Mrs. F is the better minimum holder of a house situated in Cape Town. During the current year of assessment, Mr. A passed away. Mr. A held the usufruct over the house in Cape Town. Mrs. F acquired the usufruct upon the death of Mr. A. So this is a situation where the usufruct went to the person who has the B dominium. All right, that's how the common law works. Then they tell you at the time of Mr. A's death, the property had a market value of 800,000 rands. Mrs. F acquired the B dominium five years ago and she had to pay 10,000 rands for it. Then the value of the usufruct in Mr. A's estate is 794,992. Now guys, what you need to remember, the proviso applies if we look at a person who's passed away who has a usufruct. Mr. A is the person that passed away, he has a usufruct. Be careful, often students will read this question and start applying things for Mrs. F. The remember is only the person that passed away. Now, the first proviso said that if the better minimum holder paid for the amount, you will reduce the value of the usufruct by the amount paid and interest at 6% over the number of years. So basically what I want you to see, the value of the usufruct is 794.992. We deduct 10,000 times 1.06, that's the interest, to the power of 5 because it was for 5 years. And that is then the amount that gets included in our state duty calculation. Example 5.2 will show us the second proviso. Now, again, guys, remember the second proviso. Just to remind you, the second proviso said that the value of the usufruct may not exceed the market value of the asset on the date of death, less the value of the better minimum when it was first created. So let's look at example 5.2. Ten years ago, Mr. A passed away. At the time of his death, he owned a holiday home in Nasna. In terms of his last one testament, he bequeathed the usufruct of the home to his daughter, Mrs. X, and the bare dominium to his son, Mr. Z. So what you need to see here is that the usufruct and the bare dominium were created at the same time. And that is what is important for the second proviso. Then they tell you, Mrs. X passes away. Who is Mrs. X? She is the person who got the usufruct again. And the usufruct goes to Mr. Z. And they tell you, the market value of the holiday home in Nasna was a million rands 10 years ago. So that's when Mr. A died. And it's 1.3 million rands now. The value of the usufruct was 891.445 10 years ago. So when Mr. A died. And... It is now 622422. What is the value of the usufruct in the estate of Mrs. X? Now, because these two, the usufruct and the beta minimum were created at the same time, the value of the usufruct may not exceed the market value of the asset on the date of death, less the value of the beta minimum when it was first created. Right, so what is the market value on the date of death? 1.3 million rands. What is the bare dominium when it was first created? What is the value there? Now remember how do we determine the value of the bare dominium? It is the market value less the usufruct gives us the bare dominium. Why? Because usufruct plus bare dominium equals market value. So this is just rewriting it. So we have the market value. Remember we're trying to calculate the better minimum when it was first created. Right. So the market value when it was first created was 10 or a million rands. I'll give us that in the question. The user fruct when it was first created was 891445. So that means the value of our bare dominium when it was first created is 108555. 
That 108.555 must now be deducted from our market value. So 1191445. So what is the value of our user fruct? The value of our user fruct is 622.422, but it can't be more than the amounts that we've just calculated. And in this case it's not, so it is 622.422. Right, that's the second proviso. Great, thank you very much.